Praise the Lord. This is Revival is Here Ministries by Senior Pastor, Pastor Chan Smith. I pray that you get something out of God's Word and God blesses you greatly today. In Jesus' name. Glory, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. I am Pastor Chan Smith. I am founder and senior pastor of Revival Is Here Ministries. I want to say a Merry Christmas to everyone. I pray that you have a good Christmas time. And I pray that God blesses you in every way. God put it on my heart to do a, a podcast about Christmas what the meaning of Christmas is. It's about the birth of Jesus. So I think it's really important that we know about the birth of Jesus during this time, well, all year round, but especially during this time. I pray you get blessed by this podcast. Let me say a word of prayer. God, I ask you to bless this podcast in the name of Jesus. I ask you to pour your spirit out upon us in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, that you touch your people and we will have a good Christmas season, God, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, that you would just pour your spirit out upon us and let there be a revival break out this Christmas season, God, in the name of Jesus. And you use us in a powerful way, God. I ask you, God, that the, the family get-togethers will be good, God, in the name of Jesus. And you will be glorified, Jesus. I ask you, God, to heal everyone that's listening to this, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Like I said, I want to talk about the Christmas story. Because it's really important that we see the meaning of Christmas we lose that meaning sometimes getting into the hustle and bustle of the holidays and buying gifts for people and uh, things it just it gets a really confusing time sometimes and we need to get back to the real meaning of christmas and what christmas is all about it's not about buying uh, gifts and doing all these things It's about the birth of Jesus, and that's what we are to celebrate is the birth of Jesus. A lot of churches have birthday parties for Jesus. They have a cake and ice cream. I just think that's good, especially for the kids. Help them see what the meaning of Christmas is about, what Christmas is about. So I pray that you have a good time in the Lord. You get something out of God's word. I'm going to go into reading in Matthew 1 verses 18 through 25. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, was not wanting to make a public example, make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about those th- these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you marry your wife for that which she is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit and she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying 
Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her first son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's continue on to read in uh, Matthew uh, 2, verses 1 through 12. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the day of, days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So, they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. There, uh, then Herod when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till... It came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed from their own country another way. I'm going to continue to read. The flight into Egypt. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise man, was exceedingly angry, and sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem, and in all the districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, reaping, uh, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comfort, comforted, because they are no more. Now, when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the, young, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. 
But when he heard the, that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, and being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the land, into the region of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in the city, in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now let me read in the Luke, in the Luke's gospel, in chapter 1. I'm going to start in the verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's, virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end then Mary said to the angel how can this be since I do not know a man and the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come up upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month of her, for her, who was called barren. For God, for with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice saying, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. By why, why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believes, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name and his mercy is on those who fear him for generation from generation to generation and he has shown strength with his arm 
he has scattered the proud in the imaginations, imagination of their hearts, and he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, and he has spoken to our fathers, to Abraham and his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth's full time had come to her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father Zacharias his mother answered and said no he shall be called John but they did but they said to her there is no one among your relatives who is called by this name so they made signs to his father what he would have him called and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying his name is John so they all marveled immediately his mouth was open and his tongue loosed and he spoke praising God then fear came on all who dwelt around them and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea and all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David and spoke by the mouth of the, his holy prophets who has been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the land from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, and holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins though through excuse me the tender mercy of our God with which the day spring from on a high has visited us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace so the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Let's continue to read in Luke 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out of went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and lineage, lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, 
who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, but for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in their heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen, and it, as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses was, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons and behold there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and his and this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been re revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he has seen the the Lord's Christ so he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. I like to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Moses and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken at, uh, spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to mother, Mary, said to uh, Mary his mother, "Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that." the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one 
Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phenel of the tribe Asher. She was of great age and lived and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and this woman was a widow of about eighty four years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day, and coming in that instant she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all these all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. I wanted to read all those scriptures so you can see what the Bible says about the birth of Jesus, about the, the real Christmas, what Christmas is about. It's, it's important that we see what it's about. When I read this story and hear about this, I see that um, Joseph, he had a choice. He was going to put Mary away secretly because he loved her and he didn't want anything to happen to her, but he was going to put her away. But an angel came to him and he had a choice to make. He had a choice to uh, marry her and be the father, earthly father of Jesus and be a husband to Mary. He had a choice to make. And we all see that he made the right choice. He made a choice to marry Mary. And that was the right choice. We have choices in our lives. Because God has laid out before us what he wants us to do. We walk in those footsteps that he's laid out before us. And we have a choice to go with what God has for us or to go another direction. We need to make the right choice. I see this in the, the teachings, the scriptures about the birth of Jesus. That we have a choice to make whether we should go with what God has for us or go another direction. It's important that we make the correct choice and to go with God because I assure you God always has a better plan laid out before you, a greater blessing than you can do on your own. So it's important that we walk in the steps that God has laid out before us. Sometimes it's easy to go a, another direction because of the current direction, the other way might seem to be the wrong way. To him, it would seem right to put her aside secretly and not marry her. This seemed to be the right thing to do. But the angel of the Lord came to him and said, do not be afraid to marry her. So he married her, obviously. But the other choice seemed like the correct thing to do when it came to his mind. And we have a choice to make. The other choice might seem like the right thing to do, but it's important that we step back and pray about it and see what God has for us, the plan that he has for us. Because if he did what he thought was the right thing to do, nobody would know about him except that he didn't marry her, that they wouldn't know much about him at all, they wouldn't talk about him this time of year. And he wouldn't have had the plan of God that God had for him. 
if he would have chose the thing that seemed right. But he listened to God and chose what God had for him. God had so much better for him. He made the right choice. We need to make the right choice from what God has for us. God has plans for us to prosper and to be in health just as our soul prospers. So it's really important that we walk in the steps that God has laid out before us. We need to discern which way to go and seek God's face. Ask him what he wants us to do. That is really important. So I encourage you, not just this Christmas season, but all year round to seek God's face, to know what he has for you, to the direction that he wants you to go and walk in it. It's really important and I encourage you to do that. Joseph had a choice. You have a choice which direction to go. I encourage you to make the right choice. Are you hearing me tonight? You need to make the right choice. Joseph made the right choice. You need to make the right choice. There might be two directions that you should go. One is from God. One is not. One might seem right, but, and, but one is right. You need to pray and seek the face of God on which direction to go. He will tell you. He will let you know. But it's important. Do not move until God tells you to move. And just because a way seems easy and correct doesn't mean that it's the right way. Just because a door is open doesn't mean that that's the door that God has for you. Just because it's easy doesn't mean that it's from God. Sometimes it might be very difficult to walk through the door that God has for you. You might have opposition and things might happen. But when you know that God wants you to walk through that door, then you keep going through it. Just because it's easy doesn't mean it's from God. So that's really important that you see that and that you pray and know which way God wants you to go. Are you hearing me? So you walk and with God and you walk in the steps that he has for you. You just be in a relationship with God. I see that evident in the, they call it the nativity story. I see that teaching evident because Joseph had two ways in which he could go. One seemed right, but one was right. One might have been easy and the other was, of course, a little bit difficult. He had to run a few times. God had to lead him in certain ways to keep him and Jesus and Mary safe. It was a difficult path, but it was God's path for him. He walked in that path that God had for him. I see that evident in this story. So sometimes the journey might be difficult. You might go through oppositions on the path that God has for you, but it's important that you let God lead you. God led Joseph and he will lead you. So it's important that you pray and have a relationship with God and seek God for guidance and he will direct your path. Glory, hallelujah. Now let's talk about Jesus, he is the Son of God. It was prophesied that would he would be born of a virgin. In other words, he wouldn't have a, a biological father except God. And it was prophesied. And it was also prophesied that a prophet and messenger would go before him to prepare the way. 
be like in the spirit of Elijah. Well, Elizabeth was and was barren, and she was related to Mary. God came to Zacharias in the Holy of Holies. It was his time to go into the Holy of Holies. He, God spoke to him and uh, told him the things that uh, Elizabeth would have a child and he couldn't speak after that because uh, I believe that God wouldn't allow him to speak because there was power in words. So he didn't want him to speak to ruin that. Because sometimes our words, words can hinder what God has for us. We speak curses over ourselves. I know that might be hard to believe, but we speak curses over ourselves sometimes. Say, we can't do this, we can't do that, this can't happen, you're too old or whatever, you know, you don't have the finances, this and that. We speak curses over ourselves. That's another good uh, lesson in this story, not to speak curses over ourselves and hinder what God has for us. That's why Zacharias couldn't speak because uh, God didn't want him to speak curses over himself. So God made him mute and he couldn't talk. So uh, Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. He was older and physically than Jesus. So he prepared the way, went before Jesus to prepare the way. Of course, Mary... The angel of the Lord came to Mary and said that she would bear a son. And Mary said, How is it? Because I am a virgin. But the Holy Spirit came upon her. God came upon her. And she conceived a child, Jesus. Like I said, Joseph was worried because he didn't know what really what was going on. He was going to put her aside secretly because that is the custom. Well, the custom is to, to stone her. Like that custom is to uh, to kill her. But he, being a good man, was going to put her away secretly. See, that was another choice that he had to make. The law, quote, the religious law said to stone her, to do away with her. But he had to made a, make a choice of whether to put her away secretly or not. See, that was another choice. And of course, he didn't stone her. And the angel came to him and spoke to them those things. So he had a choice to, another choice to make, like I said, to marry her or to put her away. He already made a decision, you know, about not stoning her but he had another decision to make and if he should marry her or not well he, may, he chose to marry her and he didn't know her until after she gave birth so that's another choice he had to make of self-restraint he had to uh, control himself and he had some choices to make and he made the right choices and of course they came and there wasn't no room in the inn, so they had to uh, find room in the, the stables. They found room there. They found a manger and put him in a manger, put Jesus in a manger. Of course, the shepherds came to see Jesus because the angel told them, And I don't know what the time frame is about when the wise man came. As I said, they came to see him in the house. So I don't know if it was afterwards or if they did come and see him while he was in the manger there. When he was born, when Jesus was born. I don't know the time frame, but wise man came too and gave gifts 
they all mean something. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they all had a meaning. And the meeting was biblical. They were saying Jesus was, he's a high priest, a king. And that was a validation of what God told Joseph and Mary. That the calling and who Jesus was, he is the son of God. That was a validation to that. He is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Like I already talked about in the, about the real gospel, Jesus came to earth, came in a physical form on the earth. He lived a uh, sinless life. He died on a cross for us for our sins, and rose from the dead. So we can go to heaven and have everlasting life. So we can be a royal priesthood, holy nation. So the word came flesh and it dwelt among us. That's what John said in the gospel of John. The word came flesh, became flesh, and it dwelt among us. So Jesus is the word. He's the way. He's the truth and he is the life. Jesus came that we might have a life and life more abundantly. Jesus had compassion. He was, he is love. He, he has compassion. For us, for everyone, he wants to reach out to everyone and love on them. Our Savior came in fleshly form and we celebrate it as Christmas, Christ Mass. That's what we celebrate it as. In this Christmas season, it's important that we know what it's about. And I read to you that, how it was confirmed by two different people a man and a, a woman they was individually they wasn't married and they prophesied over Jesus God will always confirm what he has for you to do it might not be someone speaking over you a prophecy or, some, or something like that, but he will confirm it in one way or another. He will confirm by sending people across your path that need to be there. He will confirm it. That is another teaching in this. He will always confirm it, what he has for you. So it is important that you walk in what God has for you. And this Christmas season, we need to see that Jesus is the reason for the season. And I don't mind when people call it happy holidays, because when they're saying that, they're talking about Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the New Year. That's what they're saying when they say happy holidays. And Christmas is a holy day. So I have no problem with that. And I think it's important not to start a war over somebody calling it Christmas or holiday. I think it doesn't matter what the name someone calls it because Jesus is the reason for the season. Some people like to get in fights and battles over silly things. It talks about it, and Jesus talked about it, and it talks about it in the Bible that don't get in arguments and debates over things. So what somebody calls it Christmas or holiday is really beside the point because, you know, it is a holy day. 
when they say on a holiday, they're talking about Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. That's when, when someone says that, that's what they're talking about. Obviously, everyone knows that December 25th is Christmas. So they're not talking about that. They're talking about the, the whole season. Of course, there's um, Hanukkah in this time. So when you're talking about holidays, that's what they're talking about. So it's really important that we not start a battle and war over that stuff because that's it's the hindrance to the gospel. The gospel is the good news. And it doesn't bother me when someone says happy holidays. When I was younger, we, we everyone used to say happy holidays, and there was no issue back then about that. We all knew what it meant. It's talking about Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. We all knew that it meant that. So no one made this big issue about someone saying happy holidays. But now this, there's this huge issue about it. People's raising up, trying to start a war over that. Of course, everyone knows that Christmas is December 25th. So we shouldn't make issues about those things that shouldn't be an issue. We need to show them Jesus, and we need to walk in the power of God and bring the real gospel to them. Of course, the real gospel is about Jesus, that he died on the cross and rose from the dead for them. And when they become born again, they are dead to sin. That is the real gospel. Whoo, glory, hallelujah. And let's not make an issue and get into mindless, meaningless debates over names like that. That is silly. And let's preach the real gospel. Are you hearing me? Let's preach the real gospel. Let's get back to what God has for us to do. Are you ready? Are you ready to get back with what God has for you to do? Woo, glory, hallelujah. Had a Holy Ghost surge through me. God is good and he is greatly to be praised. And this Christmas time, I encourage you to just let God love on you. You might be going through a difficult time this season. You might have lost someone and then you really think about them during this Christmas season. And it's bothering you greatly. Well, you need to let Jesus come down and love on you. That's what he came to do, be there for us. He came to restore us, to bring us back to what God created us to be in, in Adam. Jesus was the second Adam. And he has come to love on you. And he wants to love on you, especially during your most difficult times. So whatever you're feeling right now, I encourage you to let him love on you, and he will. You might be going through diff difficult, excuse me, a difficult time. You might be going through a really hard time. You might want to give up, but it's important that you not give up, that you walk with what God has for you to walk in. Don't give up. Let Jesus love on you. Let him show you how much he loves you. And if you're having uh, problems with your family, try to make up with them. Let Jesus heal that hurt so you can be with your family. If you don't have any family, go to church. Be a part of church. A lot of churches have celebrations. They have special things. Some, some have dinners. And they shouldn't charge for dinners. Churches should not charge for dinners. Okay, that's another sermon. If, they go, if you go to church and they charge you for a dinner, you go to another church. Because it says... We are to feed his sheep. And doesn't mean to charge them. <laughs> That's another sermon. But just uh, find a good church to be a part of uh, the church family. And if you have family, be a part of that family uh, celebration and gathering. And encourage them to go to church with you. All try to go to church together if, uh, if you don't have to work. And go to church when they have a special Christmas program. I encourage you to do that. Or some churches, they if you can't go to church, they have us online services. So 
So that's really good to be a part of that. If you can't go to a physical church, go have the online services. Of course, I have revival radio services. So I encourage you to listen even to my revival radio service if you can't go to church. But let God be there for you. Let Jesus be there for you during this hard time. I encourage you to do that. He will love on you. Let him heal you of that hurt that you might be feeling in this time. And if you're listening to this and you you have a urge inside of you that you want to be born again and you're not born again, you can have that right now. If you feel the Holy Spirit is drawing you, you feel that hunger to be born again, to accept Jesus into your heart, you can have that right now. Repeat this after me and know it and have faith. Mean it with all your heart. Say this. Say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come and live inside of me. Be the Lord of my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept that you died on the cross and rose from the dead for me, and I confess that. I confess that you're the only way to heaven. Come and live inside of me, Jesus. Wash me with your blood and forgive me of all of my sins. Make me a new person. Make me born again. Make me a new creature and make old things pass away and all things become new. Make me dead to sin now, Jesus. Use me, Jesus, in a powerful way. Heal me, Jesus, of everything that ails me in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, baptize me in your Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I ask you, Jesus, to use me to send a revival everywhere I go, Jesus. Let your power and anointing flow through me, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you just said that, congratulations. You are born again. You are, you're now a child of God. You're, not, you're now my brother or my sister. Ooh, that is the greatest miracle of all. Some of you even got baptized in the Holy Spirit. That is awesome too. Praise God. Send me a testimony. Send it to chan at revivalishere.org or send me a letter to Revival is Here Ministries, P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky 40006. The address is also at revivalishere.org if you want to write it down there and you didn't catch it on here. But it's P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky 40006. There's three zeros in the zip code. It's four triple zero six. And uh, if you can, if you live in America, give me your mailing address and we'll do our best to uh, send you a New Testament free of charge and a teaching CD so you can get into God's Word. So I encourage you to do that. And I want to say congratulations. And we want to hear from you and what God is doing in your life. If God has healed you through the Revival Radio Services or these podcasts, send me an email at chan at revivalishere.org and give me a testimony. And if you feel that God has come upon you, do something that you couldn't do before as an act of faith. And most of the time, the healing will manifest that away and go to your doctor and get it confirmed. Some people even got healed listening to this. I believe that. I know that. I have faith. Because God, God's anointing is on uh, these podcasts and revival radio services. on. So I know that people has got healed. So I encourage you to send me a testimony about that. We want to hear from you. Hear what God is doing. We love hearing from you. So I encourage you to do that. You can mail your donations or do them online. The ministry is in need of donations to do God's work. It's a 501c3 public charity. So that means we get all of our donations through public donations from people like you. So if God has put it on your heart and you're getting blessed by this, I encourage you to help support the ministry so we can keep keep it going so we won't have to cut down on the uh, revival radio service, the plan on that. We won't have to cut down on a, to a cheaper plan and uh, we can keep the uh, CD outreach going and the Bible outreach and all these things so we can keep it going. It takes money to do these things. It takes a lot of money to do these things. Of course, we had a uh, food outreach for this Christmas season. It takes money to do that. So if God has put it on your heart, I encourage you to sow a seed. You will be blessed. When you sow a seed, you got to shower blessings upon you. 
It's scriptural. I've read a lot of scriptures about that in the past. This is a fruitful ministry. So you can support the ministry by going to your revivalishere.org or revivalishere.org slash support. Click on the Donate Now button and uh, you can donate via your checking account, credit card, and debit card online. It's a secure system. I encourage you to do that. It's a really good system. You can create an account via your donation history. Set a recurring donation. Well, that would be greatly useful. I encourage you, if you can, use your checking account because it's a less fee that goes up along with that but any way that you can will be greatly used by God or go into the ministry account that would be used for God's work I encourage you to do that because we need the financial donations we're trying to get Operation 7th going and lots of other new things and we of course we need finances to, to keep the current outreaches going so I encourage you to do that people are getting touched are getting blessed and that's uh God is really using me in the ministry powerfully. So you can help support that, help keep the God's the word, the gospel, help keep it going forth. It's, this is really an international ministry because people all over the world are listening to it. It's reaching out to people. So I encourage you to help support. Or you can make your check payable to Revival is Here Ministries, your check or money order. Make it payable to Revival is Here Ministries and send it to Revival is Here Ministries. P.O. Box 243, Bedford, Kentucky, 40006. That's 40006. Of course, Bedford is spelled B-E-D-F-O-R-D. Of course, you can get the mailing address at revivalishere.org or revivalishere.org slash support. So I encourage you to do that. And you will be greatly blessed and it will be used for God's work. Of course, I have a Facebook page and a Twitter page. You can go to facebook.com slash revival is here or twitter.com slash revival is here M. I encourage you to do that. Like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. When God shares me something, I'm going to post it on there. You know, of course, when he downloads me something, when I do weekly updates, I'm going to post it on, on there and I post a podcast on there. When I post them on the, the ministry website, I'll post a link on the Facebook and Twitter. And when I do live revival radio services, I will post them on there. So I encourage you to do that. And God will bless you in a powerful way. Sometimes I post little pictures on there and different things. So I encourage you to do that. God will bless you. I have a live revival radio services. The best way you can hear that is by going to revivalishere.org slash radio. You won't see any ads and all that stuff on there. You would just see the ministry things on there. There's a Donate Now button on the right side there. It's revivalishere.org slash radio. That is the best way to hear the Revival Radio Services live in the archives from a computer. Or you can go to blogtalkradio.com slash revivalishere. Or from your mobile device, go to m.blogtalkradio.com slash revival is here. From your mobile device, make sure you have a Wi-Fi connection or a good data plan because it will use internet. Or you can also, when you pull up the page on your mobile device, you, you can listen to it over the phone and then we'll click dial a number and you can listen to it over your phone. There's two ways you can hear it over your phone by going to that page. You can stream it over the internet or when you click on the, another option and then we'll dial a number for you. So I encourage you to do that. Of course, the number to listen to it live is 323-443-7437. Write that down. Let me repeat that. It is 323-443-7437. Write that down. I encourage you to do that. God, I bless you. I want to thank you in advance for listening. We're trying to get a uh, prayer line open started. And that takes money. So if you want to help support that, you go to revivalishere.org slash support. You can help support so we can get a prayer line started. I'm looking forward to that. People have expressed the need to for us to start a prayer line. So I encourage you to do that I'm really excited about that God is really moving 
is really moving in powerful ways through revivals here ministries and I want to thank God for that we was also able to buy revivalishere.com of course the main website is still revivalishere.org we was also able to uh, buy that domain and if just it just uh, trans forwards over to revivalishere.org that's the main web page but uh, I'm excited about that so when people go to that may type in .com by mistake they can still go to the main ministry website of .org the revivalishere.org one so I'm really excited about that I'm really excited about that so I just want to share that too I'm thankful for what God is doing I'm thankful for this opportunity let me pray for you let me pray God to heal you too I pray God for everyone that's listening God that you just touch them in a powerful way and heal them let your healing anointing flow through them God in the name of Jesus and you heal them and I speak life into your body in the name of Jesus I speak life into it whatever ailment that you have I speak it to be healed right now in the name of Jesus Satan I command you to loose them right now in the name of Jesus you infirmity I command you to leave them in the name of Jesus you cancer, I command you to leave that body in the name of Jesus. You heart problems, you strokes, I command you to leave that body in the name of Jesus. I command eyes to be open right now in the name of Jesus. I command the demon of blindness to leave them right now in the name of Jesus. I command life into those bodies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Give your testimony. And do something that you couldn't do before and go to a doctor and get it confirmed. I encourage you, and it's a must, to still go to your doctor and get it confirmed. But do something right now that you couldn't do before. I encourage you to do that. If you couldn't move your leg before, start moving your leg. Or try to see. So I encourage you to do that. God has healed you. I feel that God has healed people. And I want to thank God for that. God is good and he is greatly to be to be praised. And not just this Christmas season. And I encourage you to have a good time this Christmas season. Don't do anything silly. Have a good time in the Lord. God will bless you. And I pray that you have a good time with your families. And I pray that you enjoy this podcast. Like I've already said, listen to the live Revival Radio services by going to revivalishere.org slash radio. I encourage you to do that. Listen to it live in the archives. God is doing the work there. And I encourage you, if you can, to support the ministry by going to revivalishere.org slash support. I encourage you to do that by clicking on the Donate Now button to do it online or you mail your check or money at money order to Revival Is Here Ministries, P.O. Box 243 Bedford, Kentucky, 40006. And I encourage you to do that. I want to thank you. Pray that God blesses you. I'm Pastor Chan Smith. I'm founder and senior pastor of Revival Is Here Ministries. This podcast, Podcast 72, Christmas, is copyrighted 2012 Revival Is Here Ministries. I pray that God blesses you in every single way and that God touches you powerfully this Christmas time and all year round. Praise the Lord. This is Revival is Here Ministries by Senior Pastor, Pastor Chan Smith. I pray that you get something out of God's Word and God blesses you greatly today. In Jesus' name.